Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Relax and Stress Relief Podcast Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes Now in this recording, I'm going to do something a bit different. So, technically, this is, this isn't going to be like any of the other recordings. Because I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, it's a true story. But what it might do is open your mind towards... Something that I discovered, which may be really useful for you going forward. Um, and it's in connection with chronic pain and stress. Okay. So this might not be the only story I ever tell. I, I might one day tell you about my own stress issues from the past. Uh, and sort of how I kind of overcame them. Although I have talked about that in the past on other podcasts. But this isn't going to be about me. This is going to be about one of my clients back in 2006 or 2007, one of those. Yeah, I think it was 2006. And I was offering a free pain relief service in my local town where I lived and at the time I had I I was working full time and I did this on a Saturday morning I rented out a therapy room every Saturday morning and I had up to four people come and see me between like nine and one something like that Every person I came to to came to see me, I did a relaxation session with them, and every single person told me that their the level of their pain had reduced substantially. Now I'm choosing my words there, as in <laughs> they told me. Because, of course, there's no 100% uh, to be able to really, you know, to know whether or not they were telling the truth or they were just not wanting to, you know, upset me by saying that it was, that it hadn't worked. But I don't, I don't think I present myself in a way so that somebody would want to please me in that way you know I'm very much I was very open to being told that something hadn't worked because I could then do something else I could do something different and in those days especially with well with all any record any not recordings but any one-to-one -one sessions uh, especially with pain relief I was very focused and uh, stress relief as well. I was kind of like a dog with a, a bone in a sense of I, I wouldn't let it go until I'd reached my client's goal, which was to, you know, reduce the pain. And I'm just thinking, I'm going to tell two stories actually to very um, important, one for the chronic, for the pain relief, one for stress relief. Both were huge. Um, you understand what I mean when I tell you. Uh, so I'm not going to, you know, there's, there's no detail of uh, the conditions that they had because that's not relevant to the story. It's relevant to their story, 
but not relevant to um, this story. So there's going to be two people. The first person is a man. And both of these people, by the way, they sent me letters afterwards, like, you know, some like months afterwards, telling me about the success. So, you know, it definitely wasn't a case of, yeah, thanks for that, and leaving and just thinking, what a waste of time. You know, they really did benefit. So, and this is not in chronological order because the second one was the, first, the person I saw first, but I want to talk about the chronic pain client first. And he came to me with something that is known as um, can't believe I've just forgotten the name of the, t of the, the term uh, a false pain um, a phantom pain phantom leg pain that's what he presented when he came to me. I knew what he was coming to me for because I'd spoken to him on the phone previous uh, for about three, four minutes. I'll be honest, I didn't know what I was going to do when he came in. You know, I'd... I thought, oh, relax, you know, relax him and, you know, see, see what, how he is and see what kind of comes up creatively. Now, I think the first thing, it's not necessarily relevant, but to call anything phantom pain is very disrespectful to the person that's experiencing it. Because it's, it's not phantom to them. So... You know, it's this person had had a motorbike accident, and really badly damaged his leg. And he had a damaged leg for, I think, he had multiple operations and stuff, because they were trying to save the leg. Uh, so he was in a lot of pain for probably about, I think two years or something and then eventually they amputated it seven years previous to him coming to see me seven years and he'd been in pain constant pain for seven years to the point of well you think of the worst case scenario that's kind of where he'd got to at, at times so he came, he came to me and the reason I'm laughing is because hypnosis is often the last, the last uh, option for people. Yeah, you know, they, they do everything else but hypnosis, and they'll come uh, as a last, uh, a last chance to try and, you know, do get some kind of uh, help. Which is a little bit of a shame because. For pain relief and for stress relief, hypnosis is brilliant. I guess it depends who does it or who you do it with. And if you listen, I should say, if you listen to my podcasts and you perhaps you don't, you don't feel you're getting the best benefit, do search for other other people. I know it's weird that I'm suggesting to go away, but yeah, I want I want you to stay, but. Never give up because there's lots of people out there that are good, probably way better than me. Um, some that are perhaps worse, I don't know. Uh, I try and work on the basis of it's not all one, it's not all done in just one recording. Each recording builds upon the last one, even though it may be completely separate, uh, have nothing in common, it may seem. But there's that continuity I guess it's my voice is the continuity there's the relaxation which is the continuity and you know different ideas and what you might find is over time changes start to happen 
it may happen instantly. It may happen, you know, during the recording. You feel more relaxed. But something bigger happens. Something deeper. Which can change how you think. And you can end up feeling more positive about yourself. And having more love for for you. Starting to feel a bit more gratitude for what you have. Instead of focusing on what you don't have. And I'm, I'm being general with that. As a human being. I know that I do that sometimes. And I think it's a general human habit. Is to sometimes focus a bit too more, too much on the negative than on the positive. And I'm a, I'm a big believer in trying to find positives that are real. Like I've got a grumbly stomach for some reason. I've just eaten. So I don't know why that is. Shush. Now, if you can find positives about yourself that are real, that you believe, that you know to be true, it doesn't matter how big or small they are, you can then build upon that. And then as time goes by, you start to realise when I say certain things that you do actually deserve to be happy. It's not just a throwaway line or a cliche or, a, or whatever those various words that basically mean bullshit. Because it's not. It's real. You, why, why shouldn't you be happy? And some people say, oh, because of what I did when the past, the past is gone. This is now. None of us are the same person that we were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 5 years ago. Some people cling on with every ounce of their being to how they used to be. And those are the most miserable people. Some of those are the most miserable people you'll ever meet. And I mean unhappy, like really unhappy. Because they're stuck in the past that past version of themselves does not fit in with today's society. You know, still be walking around using words that are no longer appropriate. And it's hard to keep up with all that stuff. You know, when I went to school, when I left school, the amount of things that were just normal to say and now can't say them anymore. I try and keep up to date, but I'm not always that great. But I think ultimately, if you've not, the less hate you've got in you, the less t the less chance you're going to say something wrong or offensive. But you know, it's just an idea. So the more you listen to me, the more open you become to the fact that change is happening. And every day you wake up, you feel, you know, you might feel like, oh, it's another day and. Everything's the same, but it's not. It's really not. When you finish, re listen to this recording, you'll be different to the way you were before you started. And that's not because of how wonderful I am. It's because we are always changing. One idea can change your perspective. One idea. You know, one sentence can actually open up a part of your brain that almost transforms and uh, gives colour, a different, maybe a different colour, a different shade to the way that you used to see things. It's almost like putting a colour over a spotlight so that it, maybe it used to be red and now it's orange or it was dark blue and now it's, you know, bright yellow. That changes the way you're seeing things. Seeing things from a more positive viewpoint. 
Hmm. So going back to this person that I was seeing, he came to me. He had one leg, so he had crutches. Um, yeah, he did. He didn't have his leg. He, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't have um, a what's it? You know. I don't know what they call them, but he didn't have a prophe prosthesis, is it? He, he, so I don't, you know, I don't know what the situation was, but because he was in so much pain, he couldn't have anything touch it. Basically, that's the situation. So I'm just talking to him. He gives me the history. Had the bike accident. Tried to save his leg and... Uh, you know, for a couple of years, loads of operations, and eventually had to have it amputated. And for the last seven years, he's been in tremendous pain with his leg. I didn't know what to do. So, I kind of, I thought, I need more information than this. Um, and with the best will in the world, having also been a counsellor, well, I'm qualified as a counsellor, uh, counselled for about three years full time. I people miss stuff out. I don't think they per <laughs> they purposely do it, but sometimes people miss important information. Maybe it's because they can't face it themselves, or it's just too you know difficult. Um, I'll give you an example. There was this lady that came to me for hypnosis. She had a phobia of travelling to the airport. That was the thing. So she was scared of flying, but it was the travelling to the airport that was the thing. That was the biggest thing. Absolutely scared. Like really, really. And I was trying to think. I like, couldn't... Um, really figure out where she was coming from on that so I said were well, you scared of flying no wasn't scared of flying she was scared okay she had a, a little bit of fear because of the travel but once she got to the airport the fear had gone and she was okay traveling on the plane if that makes sense but previous to that she kind of was absolutely petrified of the journey and the flight kind of included in that until she got to the airport and then she was okay. So I couldn't just leave it there. I had to find out what what was the cause. Because there was a cause on that one. That, that kind of stuff doesn't just suddenly appear for no reason. And she said, I don't know. And... I did some relaxation with her and, you know, just um, for the first, the first time. She came back twice. The first time she did relax and uh, we did some visualization and did some like rehearsal because she had a trip coming up at the end of the month. So it's about three weeks away. So I saw her the first time. And I said, and she said, okay, well, I feel a bit better about the journey than I did. Probably the stress level would reduce by about 50%. We rehearsed the journey in our mind. We rehearsed it. And, you know, so, because if your mind is imagining something happening, your body and your neurological system and all that stuff doesn't know the difference between imagining it and actually happening with things like that. So that's why that's the only reason phobias can exist because of the imagination. We couldn't have a, a phobia of something based on uh, something that happened in the past because it'd just be, it happened and that was it. It's only by thinking about it almost reliving it that you know creates that phobia 
and if the mind didn't work that way if the mind didn't work in a way is of being able to just believe what's going on the whole body kind of join, joins in you know the party of negativity and the body and the mind doesn't know any different in a sense of what you think about your body and your your brain whatever all seems to believe it so that's something worth thinking about you know what we feed into our minds is often really believed even though it might be absolute rubbish so the second week she came back oh by the way just relax while I talk to you you probably are anyway just just chill out you know there's a few ideas that will come up a few ideas a few and the learning I say learning but the the point of these stories I think will become evident you know very soon and it may change the way that you approach listening to these recordings in some ways because it just shows there's more going on there's more to it and the power the power of imagination and relaxing is infinite because we're always we're already using our imagination. Unfortunately, a lot of us use use our imaginations to cause suffering for ourselves, but not meaning to, not intentionally. Because we just haven't realised maybe that what you think about is what your brain gives you more of. So if you consciously keep thinking about something, your unconscious mind, whatever part of your mind that you know gives you stuff, it will just give you that because it thinks that's what you want. We, he keeps thinking about it, therefore it must be what he wants more of. When actually it's the last thing you want. You know, if you if you meet someone, you know, if you work with someone, or someone maybe you see them once a week, whenever you see them, you say, "Oh, what about that? What about that football match? Or <clears throat> you know, what about that basketball game? Those I don't know anything about sports really, apart from boxing." But what, what about those Lakers or whatever? And that person was, oh yeah, yeah, they're really good. It was good that was, yeah. And you get into that like little chatting about the Lakers. When actually neither of you would really want to talk about the Lakers, but for the next five years, you know, every week when you see each other, you end up talking about the Lakers because both of you think the other one wants to talk about it. But you don't. You just couldn't think of anything else to talk about. You saw that there was, maybe you saw they had a, a book on the side, which was a book about the Lakers club. And you thought, oh, there must be a fan of the Lakers. Uh, I know a little bit. I'll just say hello. What about the Lakers? Just so you could get on with them. The fact that that book might actually be a gift for a friend. And they might absolutely have no interest in that particular sport. So, you know, they kind of you get more of what they think you want. Oh, the, he wants to talk about the Lakers, so I'll talk about the Lakers. <laughs> it's just, they start bringing you in you know, Lakers merchandise and start saying, do you want to go to a Lakers game? And like, no, I don't. 
Now I don't know who the, I know the Lakers are famous. I don't know anything about them, so I don't know if it's a foot. Is it baseball or football? I'm not sure. Or is it basketball or skiing? I don't know. I'm English. We don't have don't really have basketball, and we don't have American football here either. Well, we do actually. We do a little bit. Um, so. This lady came back to me the second week. The one that was having phobias traveling to the airport. And she mentions on a whim, just off the cuff. Oh yeah, I had a crash. I had a, a really bad car crash three years ago on the way to the airport. And I said, do you think that might have something to do because I think we were talking about, in, she was talking about car insurance. That's how she got to that. And I, she she asked me what I did. And I said, I work in car insurance because that's what I did during the week. And I was doing the hypnosis at the weekends. I said, I work in car insurance. She said, oh yeah, I had a problem with car insurance a few years ago. I said, yeah. She said, yeah, they they wouldn't pay out. Because um, I had a, you know, I had this really bad car crash three years ago and uh, and he said yeah it was on the way to the airport so she wasn't telling me about that she was just talking about the insurance I said wait wait a minute you had a car crash a bad car crash and you were injured on the way to the airport she said yeah I was on my way to go on holiday and I just looked at her I just like just I figured that we were on the same page. And then she said, well, so what, what insurance company do you work for? Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> let's back, let's backpedal a little, a little bit. You had a car accident on the way to the airport. She said, yeah. And you got, you got phobia of traveling to the airport. She said, oh. As soon as she realised where the phobia started, it changed. Now she still needed, she's, she still wanted some relaxation and to prepare for the trip, but a whole that rigidness had gone. She started laughing actually at how ridiculous the scenario was that she hadn't remembered that. And yeah, she ended, we re she had a relaxation session because she was, she was here anyway, so it was there for an hour or fifty minutes, and then she she went off and sent me a letter uh, a few weeks later saying she'd have a really good trip, no 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 problems going to the airport, and uh, thank you. So going back to this man with he, the uh, phantom limb pain. Again, I had to delve a little bit more into it. Because I couldn't, other than relax his mind. The one thing I wasn't going to do. Which didn't seem right. I just didn't seem the right thing to do is to relax him and say to him, you know, basically your pain isn't real. It isn't real. It's just phantom limb pain. It doesn't exist. And technically, no physical pain exists in the sense of it's not in that part of the body. It's coming from the brain. You know, there's a message from that part of the body, goes up your spinal cord to a part of your brain which is responsible for, you know, that part of the body. And then the brain sends a signal down your spinal cord, which is pain. You know, so the pain isn't actually in that part of your body. The injury is, but the pain it comes from the brain. Now, it doesn't feel like that, I know, but that's the way it works. I mean, apparently, 
when we our vision we're actually seeing things upside down but our brain changes it so it's up the right way it's weird the way that the humans are built very strange so i wasn't going to say to him yeah the pain doesn't exist it's just in your head all pain is in our head um technically you know it's, as far as, you know, as I said then, how it comes from the brain. Which I don't class as the head. For me, the head is the scalp. The, the brain, that's the, it's inside the head. <laughs> so, I didn't want to say to him, oh, no, there is no pain there. Because that would be condescending and, um, almost cruel to say something like that to somebody that had seven years of excruciating pain so I asked him to tell me a bit more about the accident about his leg you know during that period of having it before he had it amputated because and I wanted to I wouldn't know how it felt more than anything else I wanted to know how his leg felt because, oh, it's in pain. It's not enough uh, for what I needed to do. Give me a scale of 10 between 1 and 10. He said 10. That wasn't enough. It's great to gauge sometimes, especially if you're medicating someone. I'm not medically trained, so I can't do that, but uh, that's something that a doctor would do, sort of, or a nurse. Where are you between 1 and 10? I studied chronic pain for years, like proper textbooks and stuff. Uh, I wanted to become a pain specialist, but unfortunately, um, I have no intelligence, so I wasn't able to. <laughs> Damn, who'd have thought? So, I asked him to describe to me the pain. And the best person in the world to describe you there physical discomfort, whether it's stress, whether it's pain, is that person. So someone says, oh, I've got, uh, you know, my leg hurts. It's so easy to assume that, oh, it's the same as the person I saw last week that had a bad leg, or how it is for me when I've got a bad leg. No, we all experience things differently. So I wanted to hear what it was like for him, personally. And he described it. And he basically said, it's a little bit graphic, but it's not, you know, it's horrible, but it's, it's really important for the story. He said he felt his leg felt the same as it did just after the accident because his leg was very badly uh, twisted, let's say. It's, it was, you know, he had multiple breaks. and it was, So it's very, but he said that's how, his, that's how his leg feels now, the part of his leg that wasn't even there. That's how he said it feels. It feels the way it did after the accident. And I guess that would have been when he was in hospital, or maybe he, yeah, he remembered the actual... Yeah, I think he was conscious after the actual accident. So that's how it felt. All twisted. So I said, okay, we're going to try something. And I asked him to relax, just his body. And I talked to him about his leg as if it was there. So I, I think it was his right leg that wasn't there. So I asked him, I re relaxed his body, started at the top of the head, down. You know how I do in these recordings sometimes. And when I got down to his hips, then I got down to his knees. And what I did, I focused on a relax his left leg first. And then I start at the top of his right leg 
and got him to relax his the thigh of his right leg. And then I asked him to start to relax the bottom half of his right leg. Something that he's, first of all, never been asked to do, never even thought about doing, and was something he didn't believe was possible. And in that process, while he was relaxed, I asked him to imagine that his leg was starting to straighten up. So it was become, I said, you're not going to feel anything. You're going to feel so relaxed. But what you're going to notice is your leg is starting to straighten up. So it's no longer twisted. It's going to go back into exactly the same position as the left leg back how it used to be before, you know, before the accident. And this will happen as you relax more and more. So I want you to focus on that part of your body and just allow it to relax. And I don't know how long it took, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And I moved down to his ankles, to his feet, his toes, relaxing every part at the bottom of his leg onwards to the point where every it was just completely straight completely how it used to be as relaxed as the left leg and then we finished the, the session you know well I didn't finish it I asked him to open his eyes because you know, I'd always like to have at least 10 minutes at the end back then where I could talk about what we'd done, find out how he was feeling. And he couldn't believe it. His leg no longer felt twisted. His, then a twist in, he said, that was what was causing the pain. That was what was causing the discomfort. The fact that his leg was so twisted. Now that it's reset and back to its normal shape, the same as the left leg, everything facing the right way, you know, it wasn't hurting anymore. And I think I was probably more surprised than he was. So he left. He said, thank you. I said, come back next week. Because I'll be honest, I didn't know if it was going to last. I didn't know because this was the most serious injury that I'd ever dealt with as far as um, at that point. And he, he came back the next Saturday. He sat down. He was there for 50, well, probably 10 minutes. He said, I don't need, I don't need anything from you. My leg's fine now. He said, um, for seven years I had people tell me that you don't have a leg there, you don't have, there is no leg there. And that's the one thing I didn't need anybody to tell me. I feel like crying actually when I say that. It's like, it's the most ridiculous thing to tell someone that they don't have a leg when they know that. They don't need to be told that. And he, he said, oh, I said, okay, I'm going to keep, keep next week one session open for you. And just, I'll text, just text me or I'll text you the Friday evening and let me know whether or not you need it. Or in the week, you know, or just let me know. And he called me, I think, and said, no, it's fine, I'm still, still good. And then he sent me a letter a few months back later to say that, you know, the whole story, really. So that was cool. Which just shows that the imagination 
is so powerful. So he was actually straightening his leg. In his imagination, his body, his nervous system, the brain, every part of him believed that that was what was happening. And those pain signals from his brain stopped. It wasn't needed. I mean, from a simple, a very simple perspective, if you push your finger back, there's a point where it starts to hurt a bit. And that's the brain basically saying, alert, there's, a, there's you know, that's, this is what they call acute pain, acute pain. I'm doing it and it's not that painful, but it's a bit of pain. Of course, if I went further back and thought it'd break, I guess, eventually. And then I would really need to, to finish the recording. But that would be a bit embarrassed, for, you know, to do that. Why would I do that? But if I let go of it, instantly the pain stops. So the brain reacts instantly to this stuff. Now, if the pain is still there when I let go, that's the, uh, there's two things. Either I've damaged my finger or that would be the equivalent of having chronic pain, pain where it's not needed. And relaxation, visualization, imagination, and... That's really all you need. Maybe a bit of self-belief, but that comes from it. You start, the more you do this, the more you realize that actually there's different ways to feel relaxed. You can feel rela relaxed just by listening to me talking about something like this. And even when it comes to physical difficulties or physical discomfort can reduce or even be eliminated by just listening. So now what I'm going to do is talk about the next person and this is very much to do with stress relief okay so we've done chronic pain relief an extreme version with using relaxation and i think these two stories pretty much sum up the reason for this podcast stress and pain relief so this next person Again, it's an extreme situation. I had to go to her house because she was too ill to travel. She had needed double lung transplant. And now that wasn't the issue. Okay. Her issue, that was the issue for her. But, but the issue that she asked me to go and see her for was she had a lifelong phobia of hospitals a lifelong phobia to the point of not even being able to step inside a hospital uh, now she needed to be on a transplant list she wanted to be on a transplant list and if she didn't get a transplant then worst case scenario and she needed one soon However, twice she'd been had appointments to go into the hospital and to have all the tests that they have to do to find out if she was compatible in order to be able to have a transplant. 
I guess if she was able to go through, to cope with the operation, all that stuff. I don't know the ins and outs, but I think she had to go in for about two days to be have all these different tests. She was petrified. I'll be honest, I think I would be too, but it wasn't about, it was about going into the hospital uh, itself. And she'd had two appointments previous. She stepped inside the hospital twice and ran out crying and didn't go back. Her specialist, the doctor, the specialist said to her, she had one last chance. Um, because of the huge waiting lists and stuff. And he said that if you don't, it, you know, if you, if you just don't turn up, because this is the day she couldn't really cancel, you know, you can't cancel an appointment like that, you know, 10 minutes before you're supposed to be there because it's such a big process, two days worth of tests. So he said, you've got one last chance. If you don't turn up for this appointment and stay for the two days and have all the tests, you won't be on, you won't be being put on the transplant list, which basically was a death sentence. If you, however way you look at it, it's, you know, if she wasn't, if she didn't get a transplant, she wasn't going to survive. Not much pressure on me then. And she wasn't easy to deal with either because she was sceptical. She didn't believe that I could help her. She didn't believe, she didn't know me. I was in her house. So that's, it was her territory. So it was almost, I was a, almost like an unwelcome guest, which was weird. Um, she, but Mark, I had instant compassion for her because she was sitting there with an oxygen tank and she clearly was unwell. Um, but she didn't seem like she really wanted me there. But I wasn't going to leave until I'd done what I went there for. I'm not saying I wouldn't have left if she told me to get out. Of course I would have done. But I was, um, I was determined to accomplish the goal that she wanted. Which was, I think this was a Saturday afternoon. And she had an appointment at Tuesday morning. That's, you know, the distance wasn't long away. So I was the last resort. And so... I tried a few things, nothing worked. But all the stuff I started at the beginning didn't work. She thought, no, that's, that's rubbish. That's not made any difference. So I'm not going to go through all the different techniques. But I found a way to relax her. And it was, really was a case of trying everything that I could think of. And once I got that relaxation, things changed. Her attitude changed towards me. Her attitude changed towards herself and what was going to happen. Now, I ended up feeling quite close to her actually the preceding months and we got on really well so the base the bottom line was and I had contact with her all the way through including when she had the operation I would just say she did turn up to the tests on the Tuesday morning walked right in had all the tests Apparently, she was laughing loads when she was there. It's almost like she felt free. There's a freedom that she had. And apart from the fact that this was going to hopefully save her life, there was a freedom because she didn't have that, that anxiety anymore. It was gone. And she, I spoke to her. Uh, a 
couple of days later, I think probably on a Thursday, so she'd had the Tuesday and a Wednesday in there, spoke to Thursday evening, and she was saying, yeah, it was really good, I was laughing, and um, they've everything's gone through fine, and I'm now on the list. And I think about two weeks later, she had the operation in Papworth Hospital in Cambridge, and I actually visited her to give her some pain relief, to help her, you know, to because she'd had a major operation, had pain, so I went there and helped her with that. So the stress that she had, I suppose one of the points, I guess my point is, I'm trying to kind of get to, is that was so, so extreme. Not extreme as in unwarranted, but really, really painful anxiety that she had. But also potentially life-ending anxiety. It was getting in the way of her survival. And even that wasn't enough for her to... If, if anything, it probably made it worse, to be honest. Because it just added to it. And everything, you know, from up to the operation and stuff, everything worked out fine. And she, she had the, she had all the tests and everything. And what she came to me for was successful. But I guess the, the point really is no matter how what level of stress any of us may have had in the past, it can be reduced. It really can. It might take a bit of time, but it can be reduced in a short time. And the more it's reduced, the more often. So if you listen every day, you listen to a, a stress relief session, or pain relief session, whatever it might be. Some of that stays with you. Those feelings of relaxation, comfort, stay with you. You absorb it. You absorb that positivity. And it changes things. It really does. Changes things. It changes the way you think and the way you feel. Possibly about more than just how you physically feel. Or how you emotionally feel. More relaxed. But also, you know, things in life start to notice more of the positive things and that's quite transformative so as I said at the beginning of this recording it's a little bit different from normal but I thought it was useful a couple of useful stories that may help from, you know, just in a sense of changing the perspective, realizing that, oh, changes really can happen. And they can happen pretty damn quick sometimes. But they don't have to. There's nothing wrong with things going at a nice, easy pace. Because that's more, I guess, what I'm into now. Into a slow process. And part of that reason is because I don't know the ins and outs of the people listening at home. So the thousands of people that may be listening to this, I don't know, you know, I, I can't be hugely specific 
in some cases. So this brings me to the end of this recording. Thank you for listening and remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. So do something nice for yourself. Take care. Lots of love. Bye.